SNES Drunk. If you're subscribed to a channel titled SNES Drunk, then you probably already know what F-Zero is, but just in case you don't, it was a launch title for the Super Nintendo all the way back in August of 1991, in North America anyway. And for my money, it's one of the best launch titles for any console ever because it so clearly demonstrated a huge leap from the NES to the SNES, and it showed it was up to the task of keeping pace with the Sega Genesis. And all it took to show that was just one glance at the screen, it's that simple. Well, now glance at this screen. Suddenly we got F-Zero with like a million other vehicles and my mind feels like it's going to fold in on itself. This is just nuts. I love this idea, and it's a lot of fun to play. The basic idea behind this title is obvious. It's you versus 98 other racers racing with the same vehicles, tracks, and controls as the original F-Zero. But there's plenty of modern stuff added to update the game, like instead of getting one boost per lap, now your boost comes out of your energy meter. So not only do you have to manage the race and all this chaos, but you gotta keep one eye on your energy meter meter to make sure you don't boost too often or you're done. In addition, press the R trigger to do a spin that does damage to other vehicles, but similarly, you can't just spam it constantly. You have to wait for it to refresh every few seconds and pick your spots wisely when to use it. There's also these gold pieces that bounce around all over the place. They're generated by contact between vehicles. Collect enough and press the A button as you would to boost, and if the gold meter in the upper right is filled, you'll move to a track above the action, so you'll have a better chance to gain some ground and save your energy meter. Personally, I like to use these boosts to shortcut my way past more difficult areas of the track. You'll also run into these giant gold cars occasionally, but you'll want to run into them since they give out tons of gold grickles or whatever these are. Every other vehicle though, you'll probably not want to run into them too often. It is very easy to crash out in this game. There's usually about 20 or 25 cars that don't make it to the end of a race. The game does give you a good incentive to take a more combative approach with your spin attack, since if you knock out another racer, that will extend your energy meter, but uh, that's probably easier said than done. Hey, I never said I was actually good at F-Zero. It's still fun, but I think my best finish is like 20th. The game also randomly pits you against four different rivals in every race, and if you finish ahead of them, it gives you a better chance of increasing your overall rank, and you earn even more ranking points if you manage to eliminate them from the race, and it's always really satisfying if you're able to pull that off. And hey, if you have a hard time getting into this one, not to worry, you'll have plenty of chances to practice because the game doesn't waste much time getting you back into the action. I love how fast this game gets you into another race. I'm sure a big part of that is because a ton of people are playing right now, but it's very convenient to rebound from a crash out finish just to jump right back into another race in a matter of a minute. And if you'd rather familiarize yourself with the game in a more player-friendly setting, there is a practice mode, and for what it's worth, there's also a workshop where you can customize your vehicle, change your backdrop, and look at your lifetime stats. If you're looking for more of a challenge, there's special events on more difficult tracks, and there's a Grand Prix where the same group races four tracks in a row instead of just one. There's also a team mode that splits everyone into two different groups that go head-to-head, -head, with a score for each being added up at the end, kind of like they do in Splatoon. Really, my only criticism with F-099 is that there's only like five tracks for the lowest skill levels to rotate between. Each one is voted on before each race, but I'm already at the point where I don't even care what gets picked because I've already raced each one like a dozen times. I get why this is, it's to help separate skill levels, but as much as I appreciate the familiarity of racing old tracks, it'd be really nice if they got some new tracks on here, either bumped up from the original game or brand new tracks just for this game. So yeah, I mean, it should be obvious to anyone who's watched any of my content that of course I'd recommend F-099. It maintains the same graphics, controls, and sound of the original while adding a ton of stuff that modernizes it for the Switch. It's really difficult. I mean, I'm already seeing tons of videos with titles like How to Get Good at F-099, and if that's what you're looking for, then you've found the wrong video because I'm not very good at this either. But that's okay because it's still a lot of fun to play. I'm only left wondering what other first-party Nintendo games could benefit from the 99 treatment, like 99 Skydivers and Pilot Wings, 99 Bowsers and SimCity, or I don't know, 99 players on each team in Super Play Action Football. The original F-Zero already held up well enough on its own, but F-Zero 99 is exactly the kind of creative thinking that goes a long way toward helping translate the experience to a modern audience. Definitely check this one out. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.